that course is the entrance, the south entrance to the church. This is the plaque, the ancient parish church of Bocantus. It was presented by the Americans in 1933. This is a special show that Christine, Christine Dean, put on in the church. is the map of North America where Pocahontas originated from. And this of course is George Ogden, White Children. <coughs> the village sign of Heacham in West Norfolk and you'll notice at the top of the sign is an Indian princess called Pocahontas. She was a very famous person and was important for the history of America, the United States of America. And the reason she's on our village sign is because she married somebody from this village called John Rolfe who lived in this village in a large hall with his parents, John and Dorothea Rolfe. During this summer, King's Lynn put on a wonderful pageant with 200 people taking part, telling the story of Pocahontas. 
and our village, the parents, the children, decided that they would put on a little exhibition of art and craft in the church to tell the story. We'd like you to come and join us at the church now to find out this wonderful story and why it's so important in history. Many of you will actually know the story because you have probably seen the video cartoon made by Walt Disney called Pocahontas, which tells the very beginning of the story. Heacham is a lovely village. It's quite close to the sea on the east coast of England. It's famous for the Norfolk Lavender, as you can see across the road, which is exported all over the world. And further up the road we go to Hunstanton, the holiday resort. And behind us we have Kings Lynn, which is where the pageant took place in August. Tree possibly that Pope ah, Hunters and John Rolfe fly. The, so there's a rumour has it that there's a mulberry tree. Well, there is there, a mulberry tree, and that's up there. In there. Uh, up in the, uh, yeah. you got to go around the. Uh, isn't it? No, the oh, the fossilised one is, but the, there is a mulberry tree that's still there. Oh, that's it's, right. it's on the side of the wall. Yeah. That's interesting. That's Ocantus. Okay, you from the canoe there on the weatherway. <laughs> Here at the wall. That's the original weather vane that used to have been on the hall. What had it been burnt down? Could be over 400 years old, of course. Mm -hmm. More of the hall grounds. 
and the beautiful old trees. Now I bet these trees are a few hundred years old. Don't you? Yeah. I don't know how old they would be, but I bet they're as old as the as the hall. They were planted about four hundred years ago. At least. This sure is that thick one over there, look. The size of the trunk on it. Probably chestnut tree. They were definitely squires of the village, weren't they, the Ross family? Very much yeah, so. It's a beautiful lake down the bottom as well, it's um, cleared out mm -hmm. and turned into a fishing lake. Oh, that building through the trees? Somewhere there, isn't it? Could well be the old vicarage, yes. Mm. Lecture, yes. Family tombstones, I would think, aren't they, most of them? Because a lot of the older ones are in the actual church itself. For any member of the family, the Rolf family, um, who would like to have their loved ones buried here, can bring them, you know, their them back to Heacham um, and this is the family burial area which is rather nice really. So I don't know what the oldest grave in here would be, probably that one in the middle maybe is it? But certainly there's a lot of Rolf buried in the church and uh, the family still come from all over the world. There was a funeral in July wasn't there for two mm -hmm. people. Full aspect. a few different names now, isn't there? Because they've married other members of the village, like the Torrey family are linked together. The Lindsay family have married. The Gunter family are here, this Eustace Rolf Gunter. Married the Rolf. Uh, the Neville family have linked up, and the Neville Rolf over there. Randolph the Neville Rolf. Somebody there from Washington, look, Washington DC. Charles Alfred Rolf Gibb. Quite a, quite a lot of the families still keep the Rolf name and add it to their own um, families that have got a double barreled name. I'll turn back the, the coincidence. Mm -hmm. We had an interesting um, tale that was told to us in, in the summer. A gentleman called Mr. Monkeith Rolf, who, li who lived in Canada for many, much of his life, now lives in London, visited the church in August. He'd been to the pageant the night before in King's Lynn to watch the pageant and he was sitting there talking to his friend and, and explaining how the Rolf family were connected to his family and a gentleman nudged him on his right and said, excuse me, did you say you were a, a member of the Rolf family? And he said, yes I am. And he said, well that's interesting because I am too. And it was Dr. Gunter from the village here and they sat together side by side at the pageant. They'd never met before and there were 10,000 seats sold at the pageant and there were four evenings that they could have chosen to go and watch the pageant and there they were sitting together. So they went out for a beer afterwards and chatted about family and all sorts of things and Mr Monkey's Rolf is coming back to the village to, to follow the story through. Of Can you just start yet? Right. Th this um, tombstone here is uh, the mother of John Rolf, who, who married Pocahontas. Uh, her name is Dorothea. And her husband, John Rolfe, is right under here. Very faded, you can't actually see anything of the name. He, met, he died when he was quite young, and the Latin that's written on here explains a little bit about him. I've got the translation here. It says John Rolfe's memorial tablet. He was from Heacham. He died on the 29th of November in the year of our Lord, 1594, when he was 32nd years old, 32 years old. Whilst he lived, he was much service to his fellows. His wish was to enrich all his neighbours and kinsfolk by assisting the poor with his wealth. Nothing could be kinder than he was. He bore offence of many men quietly without vindictiveness. He increased his property by merchandise. He was obviously into shipping. By exporting and importing such things as England abounds in or needed. And he was of the greatest service inasmuch as he had spent both pains and labour upon it. 
Thus he seemed to die as the force of fire is quenched by excessive water. For his strength was unimpaired, nor had he completed many years when he died. His death brought grief to many, but he, he had done nobly, when the consciousness of a well-spent life and the record of many benefits allowed not to die utterly. So he was obviously a very kind gentleman and a very young man when he died. And, uh, and John Rolfe inherited that same kindness and same love for Jesus and, and was brought up in, in the church and knew a lot about Jesus and a lot about the Bible and, and it was this knowledge that he was able to give to Pocahontas when uh, she was taken hostage and he, um, he fell in love with Pocahontas and then married her in Jamestown in 1614 we need to go back in the story really to, to tell it from the beginning Matawaka Rebecca Pocahontas that's her Indian name uh, Pocahontas she became Rebecca when she was baptised that was her Christian name and she was the daughter, the favourite daughter of Powhatan who was the chief hereditary over king of the Algonquin Indians of Virginia he was the head of 32 different tribes Pocahontas was born in 1595. She was baptised in Jamestown, a little church there, in 1613. And she get, was given her name Rebecca. And she died in 1617 in London, um, very close to Gravesend, and is buried at the Gravesend Church of St George's. Her romantic marriage in 1614 to John Rolfe brought peace to the settlement to mark a picturesque episode in the history of two nations and this particular memorial was set up by friends in England and America in 1933. And there is a copy of the service in our church records of that special um, memorial service to Pocahontas. Uh, quite near the bookstore and on the floor here is the um, tombstone of the grandfather of John Rolfe. Now his name was Eustace, and it's interesting that when John Rolfe, that's the one who married Pocahontas, was born, he was actually a twin. His twin brother was called Eustace too. And if you look in our church records in the register of births, they are named together. Eustace and John Rolfe are, are, are listed together. And they were both born. Eustace unfortunately died when he was three. And again, that is recorded in the death part of the church register. In his grandfather's grave. This, this little doll here is rather sweet because the back of her is a little baby. Can you see that? She's carried in a little papoose. And, and this would, would be something how, like um, the mother of Pocahontas, who was born in 1596. Um, Chief Powhatan had nine wives, but we, we read in the story that Pocahontas was the favourite daughter. So she had many, many brothers and sisters. And as she grew up, she would have dressed in little leather clothes, something like this. And it wasn't until she was about 12 that she would have met the white settlers for the very first time. The Indians knew that the Spanish had arrived further south, uh, and they were getting worried about the ships that were um, arriving up and down the coast. A group of um, white settlers had tried to land further north at the island of Roanoke, and they had actually been overcome by the Indians and none of them had survived and another ship arrived a little earlier and they didn't actually land but they looked along the coastline and then went back to England and I think that's probably why Powhatan was rounding up support from all these 32 different tribes um, Chief Powhatan was a, was a very fine leader his territory was probably a lot more powerful and larger than the territory of James I who was the King of England at that time. We have a map over there showing the Indian Territory. Showing the territory of Powhatan. And all these little names are little Indian tribes. And this is the, the James River where they sailed into. Um, you'll notice that north is in fact to the right. And I guess they probably didn't have compasses in those days and so therefore their maps were drawn as they, as they saw their territory whereas the English maps, like this one here, would have had the north, the top and south, the bottom, the east and west. Um, 
just have a look over here. This explains why the American Indians were actually called Indians. Um, Christopher Columbus was an Italian, and he lived over a hundred years before Pocahontas was born. In 1492, he made a very important voyage because he wanted to find the, be the first person to find a way from Europe through a western western sea route to the Indies, where they were having um, the spices and, and lots of goods. And they didn't really know much about the continent, and they didn't realise that America actually lay in the way of this, this route. So when he landed on one of the islands in the Bahamas, he was quite sure that he had actually found the Indies. Um, that's the reason why he called the people on the island Indians. They were red-skinned. And later, um, Christopher Columbus actually discovered he, he'd made a mistake. And, and that's why these Indians were called Indians. Very lovely pictures here. Um, these are reconstructed vessels of the actual sailing ships that the English settlers first went out to America in. They travelled in December 1606 in three small ships. The Susan Constant was the biggest one, and there were 165 people on board this boat. It was very cramped. Only the sailors were allowed on deck, and the rest of them stayed below. And at the back here, you can see the two smaller ships, the Godspeed and the Discovery, which they would have used to take food and cannons and items of equipment that they needed to build their new settlement. They didn't have very good maps, and they didn't really know the area at all well, um, so they were really sailing almost into the unknown. It was a very hazardous journey. It took them five months. The, the weather was against them. The Spanish were out to capture their ships. Um, the pirates were around. The, the, there was you know, deep water in some parts and shallows in other parts. And they didn't really know exactly where they were heading for. So the route they took was to go from London, coming out of the Thames, down towards the Canaries, where the weather was a bit calmer, and across through the little islands here um, to Puerto Rico, and then further north, and they made landfall at Cape Henry. And this picture here shows them um, landing on the beach at Cape Henry. And the first thing they did on that 20th day of April was to um, set up a cross on the beach and have a service of thanksgiving because this was an, a Christian expedition and they were mainly Christians on board and they wanted to give thanks for their safe arrival. They'd actually landed at um, a, an opening in the, in the bay here which is now known as Chesapeake Bay and they named the river James River after King James and their first little town that they built was called James Town. It was quite close to where Pocahontas' father was living. Here's his little camp that he was living at called Werowokomoko. And there's Jamestown there. So it's not that far away, about three days' journey between the two. And this was all surrounded by Indians, all the different tribes of Powhatan. Is the names of all the people that were on that first expedition, and they call them the first residents of Jamestown. I think there were about 200 altogether. It does say what the names were and also what they were. Most of them were gentlemen. Uh, one or two were labourers, one or two were bricklayers, a few sailors, very few sailors in fact, um, and they found it tremendously difficult to actually build their, their settlement because so many of them weren't used to any kind of construction work or practical skills. And many of them died during that first winter. I think out of 200, there were only about 60 survivors after the first winter, which was particularly harsh. Where they landed